So we talked about the physical characteristics of neurons, and now we're going to talk about the electrical characteristics, and neurochemical, basically. Um, so neurons function, they have a unique ability to undergo rapid changes in the electrical potential across the cell membrane, and that is key to a neuron's function. Um, so electrical potential across the membrane is established by the distribution of ions creating a difference in electrical charge on each side of the membrane. So the membrane is separating um, different ions so we can maintain that electrical potential. So electrical potential is the difference in electrical charge which is carried by ions. So the difference in electrical potential um, when the membrane is not transmitting information is called the resting membrane potential. So um, to, to change from the resting membrane potential, a, a rapid change in electrical charge happens across the cell membrane and that trans, uh, transmits information along the length of the axon and elicits the release of chemical transmitters um, to other neurons or to the electrically excitable membrane of a muscle. So we'll talk about that um, procedure and um, how it happens. So there are three types of electrical potentials in neurons that are essential for transmitting information. The first one is the resting membrane potential. So, and then we have local potentials and action potentials, and we'll talk about each one of those. The resting membrane potential is the difference in electrical potential across the membrane when the neuron is not transmitting information. And um, this says it's the value of the electrical potential because you can measure it. You can stick two electrodes in a neuron and you can measure the um, difference from the inside electrical charge and the outside electrical charge. Um, a steady, the um, resting membrane potential is a steady state condition with no net flow of ions across the membrane. So the idea is there we the membrane is a capacitor it's isolating the flow of um, ions so we can maintain a concentration gradient and an electrical electrochemical gradient so um, when a neuron's resting the cell membrane serves as a capacitor separating electrical charges on either side of the plasma membrane the unequal distribution of ionic charge across the membrane is essential for the neurons to be excitable. So um, typically the difference in electrical charge from the inside to the outside, um, the inside is typically about 70 millivolts. Um, and when there's a concentration gradient of ions and they're just allowed to diffuse across the membrane, which they usually aren't, but the ion diffuses from high concentration to low concentration. So we have some forces at work here to determine the ion distribution across the plasma membrane. We have a concentration gradient, meaning there's more of one ion on the outside than the inside, and an electrical gradient. So concentration gradient and electrical gradient are um, opposing chemical and electrical forces that control the movement of ions. And equilibrium occurs when there's no net movement of any ion across the membrane. So normally there are more potassium ions inside the cell and more sodium ions outside the cell. There are also negative ions that are trapped inside the cell that um, are unable to diffuse across the membrane through membrane channels because they're too big. So they're trapped inside the cell, so they keep the inside of the cell more negative than the outside of the cell. So the electrical chemi electrochemical gradient in neurons and the membrane resting potential are maintained by those negative ions inside the cell, which are called anions. Um, and that's sort of a nonspecific, these are some big um, negative ions that are trapped inside the neuron. They're too large to diffuse through channels, so they stay inside the cell. Um, 
we get some passive diffusion of ions through leak channels, and we'll talk about the individual channels in a minute. And then we have a sodium and potassium pump, which pumps sodium into the cell and pumps potassium out of the cell, uses ATP for the energy to do that. So each sodium potassium pump actively carries two potassium into the cell and three sodium out of the cell with each cycle to maintain the unequal distribution of potassium and sodium. There's also chloride outside the cell, which is the main negative ion outside the cell. So the three main ions that help maintain um, the electrochemical gradient are sodium, potassium, and chloride. There are also those large negative anions that are trapped inside the cell. So um, the resting membrane potential and the electrical chemical gradient is maintained by the sodium potassium pump. Negatively charged molecules that are trapped inside the cell due to their size, they can't diffuse through the um, channels. And the passive diffusion of ions through non-gated ion channels. Okay, so there are some gated channels and ungated channels, and we'll talk about them. So the sodium potassium pump, it uses energy from ATP to move ions across the membrane against the electrochemical gradient. So it's trying to maintain the gradient. It carries two potassium into the cell and three sodium out of the cell with each cycle. So as long as the cell has ATP, you can maintain that unequal distribution of potassium and sodium across the membrane. So alteration in membrane potential occurs when ion channels open to selectively allow passage of specific ions. So there are sodium channels and there are potassium channels. And there are chloride channels too. So um, in order to do anything, we have to change the membrane potential. So there, you can have sudden brief changes in the membrane potential when the membrane can become depolarized or hyperpolarized. Um, the membrane, membrane is depolarized when the potential becomes less negative than the resting potential, and that is an excitatory signal. So it increases the likelihood that the neuron will generate a transmittable electrical signal. That's why it's excitatory. Um, the membrane is hyperpolarized when the membrane potential becomes more negative than the resting potential, and that is an inhibitory signal because it decreases the neuron's ability to generate an electrical signal, so it inhibits the potential of sending a signal. So um, there are some videos in the Canvas module which talk about resting membrane potential and how it's maintained. Some of them um, talk about something that's called the Nernst equation, and there are tons of great calculations that you can do with these electrochemical gradients, but it's beyond the scope of our course. Um, you don't have to worry about knowing the Nernst equation or the calculations. Um, if you really uh, geek out on neurochemistry, then it's, it's fun stuff, but it's not um, what you need to know to understand physical therapy. But um, just, just know that that information is out there. So resting membrane, bren, may, blah, sorry, resting membrane potential um, can also, there can also be longer lasting changes in membrane potential, which is called modulation. Um, and we'll talk about neuromodulators. Modulation are is small changes in the membrane's electrical potential that alter the flow of ions across a cell membrane. So, um, Store that away on the back burner and we'll revisit it in a little while. So there are different types of membrane channels that allow the flow of ions through the membrane. Um, there, there are some that are non-gated, which are called leak channels, and um, they just allow um, small amounts of ions to diffuse through the membrane at a slow, continuous rate. Um, the rest of them are called gated channels, and the gated channels open in response to a stimulus and close when the stimulus is removed. So I, my analogy for the channels is if you live in a regular city neighborhood or a gated neighborhood, in the regular city neighborhood, the streets might be smaller than um, 
the main streets so they allow small numbers of cars to come in just as they will and float across those are our leak channels in the gated community you need a stimulus like your key card to open the gate in order to get the car through and then you remove that key card and the gate closes again and the next person will need a key card to get in so that's my membrane channel analogy so we're going to talk about the individual gated channels and what their key card is. What's the stimulus that opens those individual channels? So um, channels serve as openings through the membrane. So when the um, channels are open, ions can diffuse through the channels and they go in the direction of their concentration gradient. So there are a small number of ions that leak through these leak channels at a slow continuous rate. It's like a um, a drip irrigation system where the water is just dripping out of the small holes in the hose into your garden. Um, leak channels can be important in maintaining osmotic gradients. So there are calcium leak or sorry, chloride leak channels which are open all the time and the chloride can float across the membrane. Chloride is negative, um, so it's putting more negative charge into the cell. Gated channels have a specific stimulus that opens them. So a modality gated channel opens in response to either a mechanical force like stretch, touch, or pressure, a temperature change, or specific chemicals um, like oxygen or carbon dioxide or something else that the body wants to sense. Um, ligand gated channels um, open in response to a neurotransmitter binding to the postsynaptic membrane um, or binding to the surface of the receptor on the postsynaptic cell membrane. So ligand means bind. Um, in order to open the channel, something has to bind to it. So the receptor channels are specific to the neurotransmitter. Um, so you can think of a neurotransmitter as being a key that opens the lock that opens up the channel. So um, nothing but that neurotransmitter is going to open the channel, so you have to have a neurotransmitter to open that up and let um, ions diffuse through the channel. A voltage-gated channel opens in response to changes in the electrical potential across the cell membrane. And these guys all interact um, in order to make an action potential happen.